Hello everybody, I'm Levi Litvai at the Center for Social Sciences at the Hungarian Academy of Science and also with the Democracy Institute of Central European University. And I am here to talk to you about structural equation modeling today. Woohoo! Alright, so structural equation modeling is probably the most flexible to most awesome modeling approach that uh, I believe everybody should learn so it might not be the most popular one in uh, some of the social sciences at least uh, in psychology it's all over it's very widely and broadly used uh, usually in its most simple form I would say uh, in sociology and political science it's not exactly fully unheard of but uh, it is uh, definitely more rare. Now, I would argue if there's only going to be one modeling approach that you are going to learn very, very well, then it should be structural equation modeling. And it is because structural equation modeling is an approach that is so flexible. It has uh, so many inherent properties that it can run many of the other uh, method, many of the other models that other approaches uh, have have developed, other approaches can uh, have have used, and I would argue that it can run on better, even on some instances. Now, uh, let's get through the basics. So, why is structural equation modeling flexible? Now, to explain this, I am going to start with a trusty regression. I assume that everybody who's here knows regression modeling. If not, that, that's probably the first thing to learn. Basics of inferential statistics and regression modeling. But if you're here, I assume you know regression. That's where you're coming from. So what is a regression? So regression, let's say you have a dependent variable. Let's uh, creatively call this y. And uh, this is going to be predicted by uh, some intercept uh, and uh, some, um, let's say, some independent variable. Let's call this x1. Again, very creative name. And maybe even some other independent variables. Let's say like this one is x2. Now, <clears throat> and of course, there is some error uh, in this model. So this is a model where we have one dependent and two independent variables. So let me draw this for you in structural equation modeling world. Uh, this would be this would be uh, uh, y was predicted by x1 and predicted by x2. And yeah, so that looks about uh, about right. So that would be this model. So there you go. In the first instance, you can run this regression in a structural equation model. Now, of course, uh, that is uh, that is uh, that is not much of a <laughs> not much of an accomplishment, but but it's okay. So not only you can do this, but you can have multiple dependent variables. So let's say if I wanted to have a uh, a model where I have two outcomes I'm interested in. So let's call this y1 and y2. And let's say I'm even uh, I'm interested in some kind of uh, mediating, uh, not to be confused with moderating, some mediating uh, variable. And I have three uh, predictors, so x1, x2, and x3. And I want to model an approach where I have like now two dependent variables and intervening variable, I can do this with a structural equation model. So this x1 uh, can be uh, can be related to uh, to uh, uh, let's say y directly, but uh, x2 and x3 is only related to y th going through some kind of mediator, and x3 is uh, related to y2 through the same mediator. Uh, x1 and x2, but we believe that uh, there's going to be some direct effect beyond the mediation from x3, and uh, we may even guess that this y1 is going to have a cause, going to cause y2 as well. Now, this is utter flexibility. You have the ability to do this in a uh, in a structural equation model. So, um, so yeah, not only that. Not only can you uh, can you have this extra flexibility, you can have what we call in structural equation modeling a latent variable. So latent variable. 
A latent variable is a variable that you do not observe directly. You do not, um, you do not have a direct observation. You do not have a survey question directly measures this latent variable. But we can define this latent variable through its relationships to everything else. Let me give you an example. So, um, so one such example, like the European Social Survey has uh, a lot of questions on trust, and a lot of these questions are about various uh, political institutions. So uh, there's a trust uh, of the parliament, trust of police, uh, trust of the president. So, so let's just uh, say that these are, uh, these are variables in our model. I'm just going to make it uh, three. We have a first trust second trust and a third trust. Now, in a regression framework, including all these things would cause all sorts of collinearity. Uh, you wouldn't know how to model it simultaneously together. You would have to run separate regressions. If these were your dependent variable, if these were your independent variable, you would have some collinearity problems. But we can set up a model with structural equation models where we have a latent variable, and that's what uh, uh, that's what we usually draw with a circle. More on this later. So we can have this latent trust um, factor, let's say, that is defined through its relationship to the observed survey questions on trust, on institutional trust. So let's say people have this institutional trust inside that we do not observe directly, but this thing is certainly driving how they respond to T1, how they respond to T2, and how they respond to T3 as survey questions. So we have defined a variable that we can use then uh, in predicting other things. We can also say that certain things cause institutional trust. So this is something that this is something that structural equation models can do. Now these are the most basic facilities to look at indirect relationships such as uh, such as uh, over here where we look at an indirect relationship as opposed to a direct relationship. This is uh, the most commonly used uh, approach and this when, when we are defining latent variables and testing its relationships to other things. Um, so this would be kind of the most basic facilities. I would say 80-85% of structural equation models do something along these lines, but you can do a lot more with it. If you learn structural equation modeling well, you can actually do a lot more with it. Uh, just to give you a few examples, you can test multiple groups. Uh, multiple groups would be a situation where you think that a set of structure of relationships would be different for men and women. So you can test what's the same, what are the differences, are these differences statistically significant. So you can put a hypothesis test on these questions. So you can test models with multiple groups. You can, <coughs> you can, uh, there is some facility to test longitudinal models. Um, so a lot of uh, time series approaches, um, they, they, uh, they are available. So things that you would model with, let's say, multi-level models, so to model change, model growth, growth models, you can do that with structural equation models. In fact, you can run any multi-level model uh, in a structural equation model. And in fact, you can make the structures of relationships multi-level. I have written, uh, I would say, the first book on uh, multi-level structural equation modeling. Uh, and before that, I don't think there's been like a comprehensive introductory treatment of the subject. Um, so, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is, um, this is what structural equation modeling can do for you, can do it incredibly flexibly. So uh, these are reasons to learn it. Now, I don't want to just be the salesman here. Uh, there are some reasons not to use structural equation modeling. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list a few of these. So I am a strong proponent of uh, simple is good. 
simple is good. So when we are learning quantitative methods, we tend to lose sight of, okay, maybe this model is marginally improved, but nobody understands it. So, so the simpler, the better, uh, I would say. And structural equation models are not necessarily simple. There are simpler approaches to do um, what you can do with structural equation models. Sometimes a very good example of this is multi-level modeling. While you can run any multi-level model with a structural equation model, I don't think we're going to get into uh, how to do that at all in this session, but it's simpler to do as a multi-level model. So sometimes you might not want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> the second reason is, is uh, convention. So I'm going to argue that uh, structural equation modeling is incredibly useful in, uh, for for longitudinal analysis. Another topic that maybe we will only marginally get in uh, get in, get into, but but <coughs> I would say it's a very good approach for for uh, longitudinal analysis of overtime data, etc. But it is not the most conventional approach to these uh, topics. So there are certain econometric models that are used for this type of data. So while you can do very similar, or I would sometimes argue even better things with structural equation models, but bucking the convention is never good because all you're going to get in response is, why didn't you do it this way? I don't get this. I don't, don't uh, especially if it's an econometric model, like uh, something that's uh, related to causal inference or something that's related to, uh, to, to, to panel data, time series data, uh, chances are you're going to get pushback, even though I would say in many of these instances, the right thing to do would be to use structural equation models. But bucking convention is not necessarily good. Uh, and finally, uh, structural equation models have also been called causal models. Um, and um, people have the incorrect impression that this is the technique to test causal relationships. And it is the technique to test causal relationships as long as you can hypothesize how the, the structure of causes and effects uh, are, are happening because this technique will not test them for you. Now, there are approaches to, uh, there are approaches to test causal direction uh, or make causal inferences with observational data. Um, this has a lot to do with how you design your study. Can, can you make certain assumptions? And yes, you can run a lot of those models with structural equation models, but that is not uh, what we saw over here in the, in the picture. Like we set up, a, a, let's say, a lot of, a lot of um, causal structures here. These are not empirical tests of the causal directions and the and the causal. Im there is no causal inference here. You are just hypothesizing the causal direction and assuming you are correct about these. Uh, your uh, your results will heavily depend on your assumptions of causality. So causal modeling in the sense that you hypothesize the causal structure and then you test it, but not in the sense of being able to do causal inference any better than regression. So in a way, it's very similar to regression. In both cases, you assume an outcome and uh, and um, what predicts the outcome. Uh, you assume a causal direction there. So there's three reasons why you would not want to use structural equation models or you'd want to be mindful of how you're using and when you're using uh, structural equation models. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to give you a quick introduction, uh, maybe a teaser of what is to come, and, uh, and uh, hopefully this was helpful in, uh, in uh, approaching the topic. Uh, in the next videos, we're going to be laying a lot of foundations. It's not going to be necessarily fun. It's not going to be building your own models. Uh, it's just going to be learning all the building, building blocks that you should be mindful of before we get into that. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but there are a lot of building blocks, so we have to go through them. So uh, with that, I say bye now, and I'll see you in that next video where we start covering that material. Bye!